I didn't become an artist to do anything other than to work out my own voice and to get the stuff out of me. So when I got out of school, I knew that I was not just going to use the language and the material of paint. And paint came out of a tube, and I just knew that that wasn't interesting to me. So I just simply looked out. Instead of looking in, I looked out. And that was a different tenet of modernism. Modernism, the whole modernist project is to look in and to kind of isolate yourself and to kind of, and I just thought, well, you know, I know abstract painting, abex. Asger Yorn was one of the few people, actually, that I looked at uh, early who believed that there was an abstraction that looked out and that, and the, that the politics were part of, of a part of the project. It was a very different sort of international or European or abstraction and American abstraction had a very different narrative around what modernism could be. So since I don't use paint, I basically use paper and I liquefy it so that it actually feels like paint. I, I use water. I use a lot of water so the paint, the paper lives in big vats of water and I kind of soak it down until it feels right. I use billboard paper that comes from the streets. I use um, building material that comes from any building store. I just wanted to use materials that had something to do with the social fabric of the, the, day, the times we live in and not to do with the history of just art. That was linseed oil and that was paint. Nothing against it. It just wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't for me. It was, it was a, it wasn't, it didn't, it never resonated with me. And so if you look at it, I, I would say that from a distance, it looks like paint. As you move closer to it, you begin to realize that it's not paint, but it's not actually collage. It's a amalgamation of materials that cling to the city as you pass by on your way to the metro while you're riding your bike by. It's lodged in your memory. It's the memory. Once I collect it and once I build it up, then oftentimes I, I tear it down. I create my own archeological sites on the, on the surface myself. It's like splaying the body. It's like tearing into the body. It's um, very physical. Um, it's like if I took my hand and just reached in and kind of pulled out the heart and the guts and yanked them out and kind of threw them to the side. It's, a, it's a kind of violent. It has a kind of a violent. There are moments when I'm, I feel like the, I'm working in kind of a, an aggressive way on the canvases. I am fascinated again, and I've always been fascinated with archaeology how a, civil, a civilization is built, a war happens, the conquerors demolish everything and they take the bricks from that civilization and they build their church and then the next civilization demolishes that and they take the bricks from that and they rebuild theirs. So you have Rome on top of Rome, on top of Rome, on top of Rome, on top of Rome. I find that fascinating. In some ways I think I do that on my own paintings. I, I kind of pillage my own work. I, I, I tear it down and build it up in traces. Hold on. I build it up and tear it down and traces hold on. And then at the end, I think you have these kind of social, abstract, chronological markings of Mark was here. It's like at two o'clock when they turn on the light, or four o'clock or six o'clock, when they turn on the lights in a nightclub and all that's left are the, the cups and the cigarettes and the condoms and the, the, the drugs, it, it, that's what's left. It's not the actual party. It's not, it's not the people and ah, it's ghost. It, it's ghost of an interaction that's left on the surface.